Today is the solemnity of the Most Holy Trinity, and I welcome you to the Mass wherever you are joining us from this morning. We celebrate in this feast the central tenet of our Christian belief that God is three and God is one. This Holy Mass is offered for the repose of the soul of Peter Bari, who died recently. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Brethren, let us acknowledge our sins and prepare ourselves for these sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask, Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and to bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Oh. 
Let us pray. God our Father, who by sending into the world the world of truth and the spirit of sanctification, made known to the human race your wondrous mystery, grant us, we pray, that in professing the true faith, we may acknowledge the trinity of eternal glory and adore your unity, powerful in majesty. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. A reading from the book of Exodus. When the two tablets of stone, with the two tablets of stone in his hands, Moses went up the Mount of Sinai in the early morning, as the Lord had commanded him. And the Lord descended in the form of a cloud, and Moses stood with him there. He called on the name of the Lord. The Lord passed before him and proclaimed, Lord, Lord, a God of tenderness and compassion, slow to anger, rich in kindness and faithfulness. And Moses bowed down to the ground at once and worshipped. If I have indeed won your favour, Lord, he said, let my Lord come with us, I beg. True, they are headstrong people, but forgive us our faults and our sins, and adopt us as your heritage. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. A reading from the second letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers, we wish you happiness. Try to grow perfect. Help one another. Be united. Live in peace. And the God of love and peace will be with you. Greet one another with the holy kiss. All the saints send you greetings. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
The Lord be with you and with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said to Nicodemus, God loved the world so much that he gave his only son, so that everyone who believes in him may not be lost, but may have eternal life. For God sent his Son into the world, not to condemn the world, but so that through him the world might be saved. No one who believes in him will be condemned, but whoever refuses to believe is condemned already, because he has refused to believe in the name of God's only Son. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. During the week, I happened to notice that my photo gallery has got something like 6,000 photos on it, which go back to the time when mobile phones became cameras uh, as well as so much besides and it struck me how keen that we are to make and conserve images which can rekindle a moment that we want to cherish one of the most striking instincts of all reality is the tendency to make images think of the simplest things like a rock or some inanimate object. When the rains come and soften the ground around it, the rock makes an image of itself on the earth. If you hurl a stone through a window, it'll make an image of itself in the broken glass. Now think of things on a higher level, like plants. They can make images of themselves more dramatically. Plants can drop a seed, which when it enters the ground, eventually will go on to produce, on a higher level, something much more interesting, perhaps, than a rock or stone is able. Just think of how trees can populate an entire countryside or flowers cover a hillside. Image upon image upon image. Now go even higher. Animals can reproduce themselves even more intensely and more perfectly. And then think of the pinnacle of creation, Think of an embryo forming itself in the womb of its mother. And then some months later, a stunningly complete image of its parents emerges into the light. Image making, reproduction, communication, they all seem to be marks of reality at these different levels. And think of the way that we human beings manage to communicate and make images of ourselves by conversation, by writing, speaking, the use of the media, sharing of ideas, indeed what I'm trying to do now. We reach out, we share, we communicate, we touch, we impress ourselves upon the minds and hearts of others. But where does all this come from? How does it happen? Well, every single week that we Catholics get up and come to Mass, at least when we're allowed to, and we declare our faith in God the Father Almighty, the creator of heaven and earth, because God is the ultimate cause of the existence of all things. Therefore, are we surprised that God is marked in his very nature by something like image-making, communication, connection, conversation? Are we surprised that the creator and sustainer of this entire universe is marked at every level by the desire to make an image of himself? Indeed, we might appreciate the entire physical world in all of its complexity as a mirror, a reflection, an icon of God's manner of being. To speak of the Trinity, as we do today and every day, is to speak of a play of persons within God. 
So in this way, it's no longer quite so fanciful or incomprehensible. The doctrine of the Trinity says that in the very unity of God, we find an imaging process. The Father, from all eternity, produces an image of himself, like the rocks, the plants, the animals, the humans, but in the most intense and perfect way. The perfect image that the Father reproduces of himself, we call Jesus the Son. This mirroring process that we see here below is but an analogy of the image that appears in God. Think of when I stand in front of a mirror. I did it early this morning, obviously. And the mirror catches an image of me, which is remarkably like me. But it's just a surface image in two dimensions. It's not reproducing the totality of my being, just as my words and my gestures right now are but images of me. They don't perfectly communicate who I am. You have to get closer to see that. Now think of God. The Father can reproduce a perfect image of himself, meaning an image that possesses all of the perfection of the Father. Mind, will, power, love, compassion. Everything the Father has, the Son has. That's why we say week after week, that the Son is consubstantial with the Father. He utterly shares the Father's being, his substance. All images here below are reflections to a degree, but the Son, Jesus, is the perfect reflection of the Father. When the Father and the Son from all eternity look at one another, what happens is, they necessarily fall in love. If you see something that's truly good and beautiful, you love it and you want to be united with it. Now imagine the Father and the Son looking at each other and each seeing utter perfection. That means each one automatically falls in love. Archbishop Fulton Sheen had a lovely metaphor that the Father and the Son from all eternity sigh their love for each other. This sigh of love we call the Holy Spirit, which, as I said last Sunday, is the breath that goes forth between the Father and the Son. God, then, is a play of persons, Father giving rise to the Son, the Father and the Son together giving rise to the Holy Spirit. God's unity not compromised because all three are consubstantial, one in being. Now if all of this sounds a bit abstract, remember that the Trinity is just another way of saying that God is love. We don't say merely that God has love or that love is one of the attributes of God. We say that God is love. That's what he is. And this has to imply that there is a play within the unity of God, of lover, beloved, and shared love. If God is love, not just something he does from time to time, it is what he is, then within his unity there is a lover, the Father, a beloved, the Son, and the shared love of the Father and the Son that we call the Holy Spirit. This love that God is, is so white hot, so intense, that it spills over into creation, precisely into all those echoes of communication and image making which I described earlier. The world is now a mirror image of God's intense communio, his community, his shared life, his family life. Finally, in the case of human beings, this communication in love, which belongs to our very nature, was interrupted by sin. We can say it was a breakdown in communication, a becoming caved in on ourselves. So in the triune God, 
He addresses this problem of communication, this breakdown, as we heard in the Gospel of the Mass today, in those famous lines of St. John, that God so loved the world that he gave his only Son so that everyone who believes in him might not perish, but might have eternal life. The Father so burned with the love of the Holy Spirit that he sent his own image into the world so that a sinful humanity might be drawn back into fellowship, into community. The Trinity opened up so as to include and embrace a wandering and sinful humanity. Whenever I think about the life of the Trinity, I soon realise it's a universe away from something just abstract, because we are so close to the heart of the deepest mystery of who God is and what the very dynamics of salvation are. Think about all that next time you make the sign of the cross when you claim the life of God the Father, Son and Holy Spirit. And of course Mary knows this mystery better than all of the saints or all of the Christian souls that have ever lived because in her womanhood she is daughter of God the Father, mother of God the Son and spouse of God the Holy Spirit. Amen. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. God gave his only Son to the world to bring eternal life to those who believe in him. With faith in this love, we bring some of our petitions to him in confidence. For those who do not believe in the Blessed Trinity, may the Holy Spirit lead them to the fullness of God's truth and life. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For those who suffer persecution or ridicule on account of their Christian faith, may the Holy Spirit grant them courage, consolation and endurance. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for our country at this time, that those who govern us may do so wisely, with diligence and integrity. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For the sick people of our parish, and for those who look after them, we remember especially Gilbert Cook, Sylvia Langley, and Amy Louise Fox. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. 
Let us pray for those who have died recently. Angela Hughes, Jacqueline Rogers, Vivian Clancy, and Oda Egoduela. Also for those whose anniversaries occur at this time. May their souls and the souls of all the faithful departed through the mercy of God rest in peace. Amen. The Blessed Mother shares fully in God's divine life. We ask her intercession. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for our sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Father, we ask you to hear the prayers we make through Jesus Christ, your Son, in the power and unity of the breath of God, the Holy Spirit, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Pray, brethren, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at my hands for the praise and the glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Sanctify, by the invocation of your name, we pray, O Lord our God, this oblation of our service, and by it make of us an eternal offering to you, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, for with your only begotten Son and the Holy Spirit you are one God and Lord, not in the unity of a single person, but in the trinity of one substance. For what you have revealed to us of your glory, we believe equally of your Son 
and of the Holy Spirit, so that in confessing the true and eternal Godhead, you might be adored in what is proper to each person, and their unity in substance, and their equality in majesty. For this is praised by angels and archangels, cherubim too and seraphim, who never cease to cry out each day, as with one voice they acclaim. Sanctus, Sanctus, Dominus, Deus Abad. Pleni sunt celi rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you by the same Spirit. Graciously make holy these gifts we are brought to you for consecration that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith, we proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. 
look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church. And recognizing the sacrificial victim by his death, he willed to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we, who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son, and filled with his Holy Spirit, may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, and with all the saints, on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth, with your servant Francis, our Pope, and Alan, our Bishop, the Order of Bishops, all the clergy and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom we have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory. Through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honour is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Saviour's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign for ever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always, and with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Quitoli his peccata mundi, miserere nobis, agnus dei, quitoli his peccata mundi, miserere Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed.
spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most blessed sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot now receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there, and I unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Let us pray. May receiving this sacrament, O Lord our God, bring us health of mind, body and soul, as we confess your eternal Holy Trinity and undivided unity. Through Christ our Lord. remind you that throughout the month of June, the month of the Sacred Heart of Jesus, we pray in the church each evening the Divine Mercy Chaplet at six o'clock and the Litany of the Sacred Heart of Jesus. And we'll do that, of course, this week, with the exception of Tuesday and Thursday evenings. So the Divine Mercy Chaplet each evening during June at six o'clock in the evening, except this week, Tuesday and Thursday, when the parish priest has got other engagements. This evening we have the Adoration of the Blessed Sacrament from 5.30 to 6 and the Divine Mercy Chapter at 6 o'clock. And of course, as usual, I remind you to consult the parish website for details of forthcoming liturgies and any other notices. And also, of course, if you don't already do so, to subscribe electronically. I have to tell you that last Sunday after Mass, one of my teenage correspondents contacted me and said, Father, you really haven't got the knack of being a real YouTuber, YouTuber, unless you say at the end, don't forget to hit the subscriptions and the notifications button. And of course, I could also add, hit the donate button. 
but I leave that to you and I do thank you for your continuing generosity. Have a wonderful week. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go forth, the Mass is ended. Amen. Amen.